And now, Dave Danielson. Uh, we're really excited to have Dave here today. Dave leads the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy at the Department of Energy. And he's an assistant secretary, and he oversees, as you can imagine, running EERE, a broad energy portfolio that is really intended to hasten the transition to a clean energy economy for the United States. Uh, prior to being at EERE, Dave was at ARPA-E, which stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency, and he developed and led R&D programs with a budget of more than $100 million that focused really on high-risk, high-reward, disruptive clean energy technologies. So in a minute, you're going to see why Dave is such a great person to work for. He's incredibly enthusiastic about the work that we have to do at the Department of, Ager, uh, Department of Energy, and his enthusiasm is really contagious. And with that, Dave. Well, thank you, Maria, uh, for that kind introduction. And I also want to thank uh, Undersecretary Orr for his leadership. Uh, he's an example of someone who exhibited great patience with our Congress while he was waiting to get confirmed for a good number of months, and now we've been lucky to have him for the last six months as a leader across all of our applied energy offices and all, also our science offices. And uh, I think it, just within a short period of time, I think Lynn and his team have done a great job breaking down what we like to call it DOE, our silos of excellence. So that we're all actually working together across all of our boundaries in a much more coherent and coordinated way. And just one example I think relevant to this community is our, our buildings work is really getting integrated with the grid work, which I think is a very exciting area. And so I want to thank Lynn for his leadership. So good morning. I, I want to start by thanking uh, what I like to call our dream team of Kathleen Hogan, Maria Vargas, and the entire Better Buildings team for their incredible work in putting together this amazing event. You know, it's a ton of work, uh, and I think this event uh, to date has been very, it was great last year. Uh, it's been phenomenal so far this year, and so I think their hard work has really paid off. If we can give them a big round of applause, that'd be great. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really excited by the growth rate of this uh, summit. Uh, last year, we were at about 500 people, and I remember the, the aspect ratio was about the opposite. The, uh, it was very uh, long room. Now it's long in this direction. Um, and this year, I was just informed that we have more than 900 people at the summit today. Um, and I joked with Maria that, you know, I did a complex calculation. There will be about 250,000 people at the 2025 Better Building Summit. And uh, I was joking about we we'll probably have to reserve the National Mall, Maria, but um, that may, may actually be the case. Uh, fortunately, I probably won't be around by then, so I won't have to worry about the logistics there. Um, so, uh, very excited to be here today to recognize the outstanding accomplishments and achievements of many of you, our partners uh, in the DOE's Better Buildings Initiative and Challenge. The Better Buildings Initiative and Challenge are part of a much broader push that Lynn Orr was talking about within the department to support corporate, state, and local leadership in the transition to a global clean energy economy. Uh, each and every one of you plays a critical role in advancing EERE and DOE's mission to advance American leadership in the clean energy economy. And uh, as we're seeing at this summit, you're already leading the way in making the United States a leader in this area. Today, I wanted to provide you with an overview of the key steps the department is taking to collaborate and support the work of our incredible partners which is putting us all on a path together to really unlocking the potential of a truly energy efficient clean energy economy here in the United States. So where are we today? Uh, when we stop and take a minute, as, as Lynn mentioned, and you look around, there's no doubt uh, that we live in a truly unique and exciting time in terms of where we are in clean energy and energy efficiency. In March, uh, the President made a bold United Nations climate commitment for the United States to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 26 to 28 percent uh, by 2025. And uh, it's important to note that this actually doubles the rate of carbon emissions reductions between 2020 and 2025 versus where we've been over the last few years. So this is a big step up in our acceleration as a country in reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Also under the current draft rule uh, for the President's Clean Power Plan, the EPA has proposed standards that would result in a 30% reduction in CO2 emissions from the U.S. power sector by 2030. These are big chunks of greenhouse gas emissions that are going to get done through these uh, important major efforts. 
uh, that the president and this administration are putting forward. And this is all in addition, if you remember, to the historic automotive fuel economy standards that were enacted earlier in this administration that will require a doubling of fuel efficiency of new cars to more than 50 miles per gallon for light duty vehicles by 2025. So we're hitting all of these sectors. We're making great, we have bold goals and we're making great progress. Uh, one thing I also want to point out is that th there, there's a feedback loop here, is that the president wouldn't be able to set out and the administration wouldn't be able to set out these bold goals if you weren't delivering on the promise of what's possible. So you're showing what's possible by reducing energy efficiency in cost effective ways and that allows the president to go out and say, look, we can do this. And so the work that you're doing is critically inter intertwined with our ability to put forward bold goals uh, and put forward bold new regulations to deal with climate change. So what this As Lynn mentioned, it's no longer this distant dream of the future. The clean energy revolution is now. You know, I uh, actually have a four month old baby girl at home. I was uh, during, uh, Lenore's talk, I, I had to show a picture to, to Maria. I hope that Lynn didn't mind that. Um, and like many of you who are, you know, I'm a brand new parent, like many of you who are parents uh, in the room here today, I want my little baby to grow up in a, in a world where we have a clean energy economy that I know that we're capable of that will avoid the most devastating impacts of climate change. And it's imperative that we leave a legacy for our children and grandchildren that is something that we can be proud of. And that's what we're here today to really do. And that's what our efforts together are all about. Uh, and that's really what's at stake here uh, with everything we're doing at the Department of Energy and everything we're doing together with the Better Buildings Initiative in particular to really achieve the president's vision of an America powered by efficient, low carbon, clean energy technologies. And we're counting on you, our Better Buildings partners and stakeholders to help deliver a large fraction uh, and a significant progress towards these goals to reduce our energy usage and our greenhouse gas emissions. The Better Buildings Initiative is all about your leadership and sharing your results openly to create the replicable solutions that are catalyzing an energy efficiency revolution all around this country and all around the world. And it's working. Since the Better Buildings Initiative started, uh, it was launched by the president back in 2011, as you'll remember, you, our partners, have cumulatively saved more than 94 trillion BTUs, which adds up to more than $840 million in cost-effective savings, almost a billion dollars. Uh, of savings. You deserve a big round of applause for yourselves. Let's do that. As of 2014, more than 250 leaders have stepped up to the Better Buildings Challenge, representing more than 3.5 billion square feet of buildings, 650 manufacturing plants, 50 cities and states, and $5.5 billion in financial commitments. Better Buildings partners nationwide have shared energy data as well for more than 32,000 properties, and they're already reporting savings of 20% or more just four years into our effort at 4,600 properties and 10% or more at 12,000 of these properties. What your companies and organizations have in common is that you have voluntarily agreed to be leaders, to meet an ambitious energy efficiency goal, and to partner, to collaborate for the good of the country, for the good of the world, to openly share data and best practices. And this transparency, I think, is really the key differentiator of the challenge partners, and it's what sets you apart uh, as leaders in energy efficiency. Now I have the fun uh, role of recognizing some very specific partners uh, who have achieved pretty amazing things uh, over the last years. So I am going to recognize nine partners now and two financial alloy allies who in the past year achieved their bold better buildings, energy, and financing goals. For partners, this means achieving at least a 20% reduction for buildings or a 25% reduction for manufacturing plants and energy intensity within 10 years, as you all know. And that saving is across their entire portfolio, not just one building. And in fact, these partners in particular are meeting their goals ahead of schedule as much as five years ahead of a 10-year goal. For financial allies, this means that they've met their financial goals this year, uh, just in 2014, last year. So let's get started. I'd like to start with 3M. 3M has successfully reduced its energy consumption by a whopping 25%. And now they're going above and beyond and setting another bold goal to achieve 30% in 10 years. 3M has been an important DOE partner for many years. And through their creative uh, set-aside fund and internal recognition program, they're successfully empowering their employees to save energy. 
I'm looking forward to visiting 3M to really celebrate their accomplishments in July in person. Uh, please join me in congratulating 3M's amazing work represented here today by Steve Schultz, Corporate Energy Manager. I'll ask you each to take a step forward when you're recognized. Uh, and on the, there you go. And on the West Coast, the city of Beaverton, Oregon, uh, I've actually lived in Beaverton, has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 20%. They aren't just looking at their own buildings within their school district. They also have a strong partnership with many other stakeholders through Energy Sense of Oregon. They're making tremendous, uh, tremendous progress, have already achieved their 20% goal. Uh, please join me in congratulating Beaverton on its amazing accomplishment. Next up is Chemist School District in Washington, which has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 28%. As a Better Buildings Challenge K-12 partner, Chemist is focused on responsible use of natural resources. They have a goal to create healthy and sustainable schools by cultivating behaviors as well as providing educational materials to their students about clean energy and energy efficiency. Please join me in congratulating Chemist School District's amazing work represented today by Operations Coordinator Heidi Burkhart. In the last year, Harbeck, success, uh, Harbeck successfully reduced its energy consumption by 30%. They're doing really exciting and cool things, like installing a wind turbine and creating a man-made pond to capture and reuse uh, rainwater uh, to reduce their water consumption. This, these innovations have allowed Harbeck to meet its energy efficiency targets and move forward on its goals of becoming carbon and water neutral. They're also a key partner in our water savings pilot program you heard about, uh, which I'll tell you more about in a few minutes. Uh, please do join me in congratulating Harbeck's amazing work, represented today by President Bob Bechtold. <laughs> Lend-Lease, which focuses on helping American military families live in safe and sustainable housing, has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 26%. With a focus on renewables and retrofitting infrastructure, we are impressed by the savings that they're achieving with geothermal heating and cooling, wind, solar, fuel cells, in addition to strong progress in energy efficiency. Please join me in congratulating Lend Lease's amazing work, represented here today by Chad Harrell, Director of Energy Solutions in their Energy Department. Next up is Sprint. Sprint led the charge with a 36% reduction in energy. By setting a corporate goal, Sprint has been able to rapidly achieve major energy savings across uh, all of its unique divisions and asset types within the company. In a single year, Sprint achieved double-digit energy savings just last year. It's amazing progress. So please join me in congratulating Sprint's amazing work, represented today by Amy Hargroves, Director of Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability. Someone else. The state of Maryland has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 21%. Maryland has had tremendous success engaging and enticing their state agencies to improve building performance. They've even used friendly competition to encourage these agencies to share their energy data and to better identify future projects all across the state. Please join me in congratulating the state's amazing work, represented by Emily Suntorn Saratul, Energy Data Program Manager, and David St. Jean, Program Manager. Next up is Volvo. Volvo has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 27%. Volvo is looking across its truck, bus, and other manufacturing plants to push strategic energy management out across the whole organization. They're also focused on superior energy performance and ISO 50001 and are raising the bar for energy efficiency even higher than these, than these standards require. Please join me in congratulating Volvo's amazing work represented by Burt Hill, Manager of Health, Safety, and Environment. The city of West Palm Beach, Florida has successfully reduced its energy consumption by 21% and is leading the way in outdoor lighting retrofits. West Palm Beach has also partnered with neighboring cities to establish a commercial PACE financing program that will help businesses defray the upfront costs associated with efficiency upgrades. 
Please join me in congratulating West Palm Beach's amazing work represented today by Penny Redford, Sustainability Manager. <laughs> Next up is our financial allies. Our financial allies have also made incredible progress in the last year in providing private sector capital to support energy efficiency upgrades in the marketplace. And I'm thrilled to announce that we now have five financial partners who have met the bold goals that, lay out, that they have laid out. Enterprise Community Partners has now provided $25 million in finance and is represented here today by Krista Egger, Senior Program Manager. Enterprise Community Partners has financed projects used for energy efficiency and affordable housing communities, including pre-development loans, mini perm loans, the Fannie Mae Green Refinance Plus loan, tax credit equity, renewables financing, and community facilities term loans. Please join me in congratulating Enterprise for their great work. And uh, they're not here today, I believe, but Hannon Armstrong is also, oh, you are here. Excellent. All right. Uh, Hannon Armstrong financed $650 million in projects last year alone. Uh, they're focused on making debt and equity investment in sustainability infrastructure projects and arranging deals for clean energy, energy efficiency, and water and communication infrastructure. I'll have Jody Clark stand up and be recognized for this tremendous accomplishment. So, to recap, there are now 18 organizations out of our 250 partners who have uh, shown how our bold Better Buildings goals can be achieved in an even shorter time frame than the 10-year goal that we initially laid out. You'll hear from more of these partners over lunch today on what we at DOE uh, are calling the Bionic Panel in honor of the $6 million man. Uh, and five of these partners on this panel are really going to discuss how their organizations were able to achieve these accelerated outcomes in such an, uh, an, an amazing way. Uh, and so uh, we'll look forward to that panel. Uh, congratulations to everyone and a job well done to our 2014 goal achievers. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, in addition to the amazing results of our goal achievers, there are many other organizations leading the charge in energy savings, contributing to the impressive results to date of our Better Buildings Challenge as partners who are on track to meet the already bold 10-year goal. There are also many of you who are halfway uh, to your goal when we're about halfway through our goal and saving on average about 2% a year, which is where you need to get to get to the 20% goal. You're proving your leadership by sharing results and closely tracking your progress using energy data. This is a big deal, and we want to thank you all for your leadership. We're also excited to welcome our new partners, uh, and we're seeing incredible progress already with the early years of some of our new partners, which we're very excited about. I want to thank you all, our new partners, for joining the challenge, and we look forward to, to meeting you and working with you hand in hand. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some uh, important results we are getting on some exciting projects that we've been working on for some time. Uh, you know, it's one thing to launch things, and it's very exciting. It's another thing to do things. Uh, it, within my management team, we've started talking about set it, did it. You know, as a, as a good organization, you got to say it, and then you got to do it. Uh, and so these are projects we told you that we were going to do, and we have done them. Uh, the Better Building Solutions Center, I think, is a, is a big one of these. It's now online, which we're very excited about. Solution Center is an online tool that we committed to build uh, designed to help organizations easily find energy efficient solutions by topic, building type, solution type, building size, location, and more. Uh, you can think of it like Amazon. You can go online right now for one-stop shopping and learn how a variety of organizations in this room today, your partners and colleagues, are finding ways to finance their building solutions, implement new technologies, build up their team's energy expertise, and establish community-wide initiatives that are working. Right now, there are more than 200 solutions tested and proven by partners that are up on the Solution Center today. And it's only going to grow as more partners come on board. There's a positive network effect here, and, and it's a very exciting thing. The bigger the network is, the more solutions, the, the more we can grow, the more we can accelerate our energy efficiency improvements. Uh, and so stay tuned, and please do check out the Solution Center um, as soon as you can. Lots of great stuff there. And uh, we actually want to add 100 more of your solutions by the end of this calendar year and hundreds more in time for next year's summit. So we'll put that challenge out to you to really build this thing out. I think we can double the size by the next summit, kind of like we're doubling the size of the summit itself. 
Um, earlier, I briefly referred also to the Better Buildings Challenge expansion into water savings, which you've already heard a little bit about today. Uh, just to, um, to reiterate, last year DOE launched and ran a water savings pilot with more than 20 commercial, industrial, and multifamily partners who agreed to set water reduction goals, report their progress, and then share their solutions, analogous to what we're doing on the energy efficiency side. Partners uh, in this pilot, it, it's worked. They've reported really incredible results uh, with water use intensity improvements just over the last year or so from 10 to 20 percent uh, versus their baseline years. In 2014 alone, these partners uh, achieved about 377 million gallons of documented water savings, uh, which is the equivalent of about 570 Olympic-sized swimming pools, I'm told. Uh, due to the early success of this pilot, we're now expanding this program and formally inviting any interested Better Building Challenge partners in the room today to join the water savings commitment. Uh, we'll work with these partners and our interagency partners like EPA and HUD to gather data and share solutions to common water savings barriers that many of you are facing. We know that in parts of the country this is becoming an ever increasing issue and as climate change picks up it's going to be an issue in more and more parts of this country. So it's going to be something we're going to have to rally around uh, no matter what. Uh, and then next year we can hopefully report back on the exciting progress that even more of you are making now that we expand from a pilot to a full program for those of you who are really willing to take the plunge into the Better Building Challenge water savings goals. So really excited to have those of you who are interested join that challenge. Another thing we're excited about are the Better Buildings Accelerators. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, launched as part of President's Climate Action Plan in 2013. Uh, there are now seven accelerators, as Lynn mentioned. Uh, we've seen incredible progress by our partners on the Energy Saving Performance uh, Contract, or ESPC Accelerator. 21 cities, states, universities, school districts are all committed to investing $2 billion uh, with more than actually $767 million committed now already to new contracts in the first year of the program. So we're making great progress. Uh, the Industrial Superior Energy Performance, SEP Accelerator, supports manufacturers, commercial uh, businesses, utilities and program administrators like 3M, Cummins, and Nissan to develop and deploy energy management systems. These partners are working to develop strategies to deploy strategic energy management across their whole enterprise in this accelerator. The Energy Data Access Accelerator is now helping 22 utility city pairs improve the access and consistency of whole building data to benchmark building performance. Partners are now working on pilot programs for access to whole building data aggregation in their communities. And this is going to help uh, these engaged cities to better track how their buildings use energy so they can set their goals and identify opportunities in a more efficient way. The Outdoor Lighting Accelerator is working with 11 cities, three regional networks, and two states to replace 1.5 million lighting fixtures in two years. Today, partners have already committed to 500,000 poles. And I do want to take a moment, uh, I want to mention that Otis Jones with the city of Detroit and CEO of the Public Lighting Authority is here today. With his leadership, the city has installed 36,000 new streetlights. That's more than halfway to their bold goal of 65,000. Let's give Otis and the city of Detroit a well-deserved round of applause. And finally, with existing accelerators, the Data Center Accelerator uh, is working with 16 organizations right now to reduce energy use in one or more of their data centers by 25% over a period of five years. So that's getting started. We'd love to have more of you get involved with that as well. On the new front, as Dr. Orr mentioned earlier, we're thrilled today to announce the two brand new accelerators, the Home Upgrade Program Accelerator and the Home Energy Information Accelerator to help homeowners and would-be homeowners like myself to make informed decisions about home upgrades and information about the structure before they, they sign on the dotted line. The Home Upgrade Program Accelerator was launched this month and is designed to help home energy upgrade programs bring services to more homes across the country by leveraging data management strategies that minimize costs while improving overall program effectiveness. We're launching today with six pioneer partners. Uh, partners in the Accelerator are administrators of energy efficiency programs who will demonstrate a range of best practices to minimize program costs while improving and expanding program savings, including through the use of IT and adoption of common data standards to streamline data exchange uh, and other data issues. Uh, and the Home Energy Information Accelerator is a collaborative effort among national organizations, federal agencies, and regional, state, and local leaders in real estate and regional, state, and local leaders um, on energy efficiency designed to expand the availability and use of reliable home energy information at relevant points in the residential real estate transaction chain. 
Uh, accelerated partners will develop and demonstrate replicable, sustainable approaches that make energy-related information, important data for a home buying process, easily accessible to home buyers and sellers through multiple listing service, MLS, and other reports. There are 23 partners now in this accelerator. The more information we can gather and provide about how to replicate successes in the energy efficiency space, the more progress we're going to be able to celebrate in the future together. And now we're helping not just businesses and states and cities and school districts through our accelerators, but homeowners all across the country as well. So I'll stop there and close by saying thank you, thank you, thank you again to all of our Better Buildings partners for your tremendous efforts and accomplishments over the last year and over the last few years. Many of our partners will be providing uh, presentations throughout the day. That's really the point of this summit, is really to build relationships and, and get ideas and build new partnerships. Uh, and I really encourage you to check out all of those panels. As we move forward, the Department of Energy is always interested in working with new partners and members that are ready to make significant commitments to achieve energy savings through greater efficiency. I'd like to encourage you to, to go find a, a, another company, another organization, encourage them to join the challenge. We're stronger, the bigger we are, the more of us that we are, the stronger we are, the, the more solutions we're gonna have, the more collaboration. Uh, and I wanna, make sure, I wanna make sure that you all notice that the great work that you're doing on the ground every day does not go unnoticed by the Department of Energy, by myself, Lynn Orr, by the Secretary himself. So President Obama knows about your work as well uh, and has said before that this group demonstrates what is possible when we work together in pursuit of a shared vision. Meeting the challenges of the 21st century requires the ingenuity and innovation of leaders from every sector of our society, and you are just those leaders. Uh, we have a lot of exciting work going on right now, and we look forward to working with all of you to continue to highlight your leadership and innovation in energy efficiency in the years to come. Thank you very much.